On the 12th of March 2012, Kingfisher Airlines issued a statement saying, some of our flights are being canceled as a result of employee agitation on account of delayed salaries. We are making all possible efforts to remedy this temporary situation. Never has the flamboyant Vijay Malia, the man behind Kingfisher Airlines, been put in such a tight corner before. How an airline obsession put a liquor baron on the rocks. Once called the king of good times due to his extravagant lifestyle, Malia and his companies have been embroiled in financial scandals and debt since 2012. A group of 17 Indian banks are trying to collect approximately 1.3 billion US dollars in loans to Malia. So how does one go from being a billionaire with a net worth of 1.45 billion US dollars in 2010 to being portrayed as the poster boy of bank defaults in India? What happened? Malia took over the United Breweries Group before he even turned 30, after his father, Vital Malia, passed away suddenly in 1983. Since then, he has consolidated the group holdings. Today, his beer business controls half the domestic market, while the liquor business controls three-fourths of the market. But as the saying goes, the quickest way to become a millionaire is for a billionaire to invest in the airline sector. Kingfisher Airlines was set up in 2003, but hasn't seen a single year of profit since it got listed in 2006. Accumulated losses stood at about 1.13 billion US dollars, and the money to pay for fuel, salaries, and airport fees was running out, prompting Malia to approach the government for a bailout in 2012, stating that they are too big to fail, which the government of India obviously refused. If only India followed the United States, who bailed out too big to fail companies during the financial meltdown in 2008, Malia wouldn't be a fugitive now. In a controversial report on the airline, Veritas Investment Research Analyst points out that Malia should have never gotten into the airline business. The problem, of course, lies in acquisitive excess. For Malia, there was no ducking the temptation of getting into the airline sector. For one, there was the glamour, something he couldn't get enough of despite the yachts and islands. He acquired White and McKay, a Scottish bulk liquor maker. He bought newspapers, fashion and movie magazines, bought and sold a TV company, and added football teams to his ever-expanding empire. He even added a cricket team to his list of acquisitions and called it Royal Challengers. The acquisitions wouldn't just stop there. He went on to own a racing team, Force India, which regularly competes in Formula One racing events, launched a calendar named after his brand, King Fisher, in which the best of models fell over each other to feature. Of course, the biggest venture of them all was King Fisher Airlines. Because he was the big daddy of the glamour world, he promised flyers a class of service not usually seen among the domestic airlines. Jet Airways was good and on time, but was for busy executives. Air Deccan was for the average Joe, a sort of shuttle service, while the others either didn't matter or were too small. Malia didn't disappoint. He brought glamour into the business of running airlines. Each seat in his aircraft had a TV screen, just like the international air carriers offered, welcoming guests by appearing on the screen and asking them to write him personally if they were unhappy with any service. He handpicked beautiful air hostesses, gave away goodie bags to each passenger, and the welcome at the airport counters had to be seen to be believed. He made you feel very special. The corporate sector wanted all top executives to fly King Fisher, and they came back admiring the service. The Three Key Mistakes It was when the good times seemed to last forever that Malia made his first strategic mistake. Deccan Aviation CEO Gopinath, who was desperately looking for a buyer for his airline, had all but tied up with the Anil Ambani for a sellout. Some last-minute delays eventually led to the collapse of the deal. That's when Malia, who kept denying that he couldn't even think of buying an airline whose business model was different than his own, suddenly put in his bid, apparently offering more money than the previous one to clinch the deal. It seemed like a good deal in the beginning. Malia got Air Deccan's huge market share and several aircrafts as well, plus an immediate listing in the Indian Stock Exchange. Thrown in was another goodie. The license to fly on international routes, as Air Deccan had been in the business for five years, a requirement by the regulator for any airline to fly overseas. But he also acquired the losses incurred by the airline. He spun off Air Deccan's fleet into a subsidiary called Kingfisher Red, 
So Kingfisher Airlines had an economy as well as business class and flew on trunk routes, including the metros, while Red did the rounds of Tier 2 cities as well as some of the bigger cities. It was picture perfect. Well, it wasn't actually. Malia was not just into one business, but several. And each is different as the other. Normally, for such diverse businesses, one would appoint a CEO to run it with a hands-on approach who would, in turn, report to the group chairman. You know, like this guy did for this group. While the liquor and beer businesses had an experienced set of officials running the show, the others needed the undivided attention of Malia himself. More so for the airline venture. This was where his second mistake came in. The airline had everything going for itself. Great brand visibility, loyal customers, and a wide network. But as a former business partner of Malia pointed out, he was more like an absentee landlord. Malia was seen everywhere and apparently took more than necessary interest in running the airline, but it just wasn't good enough. The business model was coming apart and losses kept mounting. There was cannibalization from the mother brand. If two brands look alike, then obviously passengers will opt for the cheaper price. Industry analysts say the third mistake was that the airline should have first consolidated its domestic operations and then introduced international routes, because on the foreign routes the competition only gets bigger, as you have international players with much deeper pockets. Looking for a soft landing The airline today is saddled with total debts of over 800 million US dollars. Malia was forced to take loans from banks which now have a total exposure of about 1.2 billion US dollars. Unfortunately for Malia, the king of good times had to abdicate his throne and flee to the UK to escape authorities in India and is now awaiting extradition to India from the UK. It isn't always that you can pull off every business venture in your lifetime. Scotch on the rocks works. Kingfisher on the rocks doesn't. So we will leave it right here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.